Hi, this is Tim. Today we're gonna to talk about how outputs react on power up in Allen Bradley's Micro 820 PLC. Depending on how you have them configured in your Connected Components Workbench software and also what instructions you are using with them. So for this video, we will be using one of our PLC trainers and we're gonna get start with the program that we left off with in our four ways to start a motor exercise. And I'll put a link in the description to this program if you don't have it. And on the surface, you press the start button, all the lights come on, you press the stop button, all the lights go out. All four motors work the same. We did talk a little bit about a jogging feature of number one. And like I said, look in the description if you wanna know more about it. But by default, if you programmed yours, just like I showed you in the exercise, and we start our four motors, and then we unplug the power, when we plug it back in, all four lights will stay off. And that is because all of the outputs on a Micro 820 PLC are non-retentive. In other words, they reset on power up, no matter what. And that may be an issue on your machine, depending on how you want it to start back up. Again, I don't wanna argue about whether pumps should start or not on power up. I mean, obviously if it's a cooling pump and it's critical, probably the moment you start it up, you probably do want it to come back on. But also there are many instances where it absolutely you wouldn't want motor or pump to start back up. But mainly, let's talk about first, how can we make all of these retentive? Then again, let's talk about how they react to a power up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify our program from last time. Let's go to local variables and we're gonna create four local variables. In fact, before we do that, let's go to global variables. And over here, you'll see you have this retained column. But if we go to our green light and try to check that box, it's not gonna let us check that box. And none of these are. And that's because none of the IO on that Micro 820 can be retentive. But what we can do is we can create local variables. So if we go and we're gonna create a green light local variable, and it will be a data type of Boolean, and now let's create a yellow light, which will be also be a Boolean, a red light, also Boolean, and a blue light, also Boolean. And now let's try to check this retain box on these variables that we've created. And you see, we can make these retentive. And now let's go to our program and let's change out these lights with our retentive variable. So instead of this output green light, we're going to go for the green light variable. Instead of this yellow light output, we're gonna go for the yellow light variable. Instead of this red light output, we're gonna go for the red light variable. And instead of this blue light output, we're gonna go for the blue light variable. And on that last one, you'll need to do it on both the set and the reset. Now let's add four more rungs to keep our program functioning like it was. So these right here now, they're just turning on local variables. They're not tied to these outputs. So we're gonna add a rung here and we're gonna use the direct contact, examine if closed, and we are going to look at our green light. And then we're gonna use a direct coil and we are gonna address it to our actual green light. So this means that anytime that the green light local variable is on, the green light physical output will be on. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste this rung three times. And the second one, we'll make the yellow light. Now make sure you're seeing the difference in these. So we have yellow light here, and then we have yellow light with the long actual address of the PLC. So we're gonna do the yellow light local variable that doesn't have that address of the PLC. And then we're gonna do the yellow light that does have that address after it. And then let's do the same with the red light.
And finally, the blue light. And let's go ahead and download that program. And if you're having trouble with downloading, uh, look in the description. I will put a playlist that has how to install the Connected Components Workbench software, how to download, how to create your first program, bit instructions, counter instructions, timers, pretty much the whole work. Okay, so we've downloaded our program and we press the green button. All of our outputs come on. We press the red button, all of them go out. It works exactly the same. The difference is now these outputs, or mainly the local variables, are going to be retentive. Which first, if you're converting a program from, say, a MicroLogix PLC or a ControlLogix PLC, then this is how they would actually work because outputs are retentive on RS Logix 500 and in Studio 5000. But now let's press our green button and let's unplug our power. Then we'll plug our power back in and we'll wait for the PLC to come back online. And only the blue light is gonna come back on. And you need to make sure you understand this part. And that is because of what we call pre-scan conditions. And these hold true in Connected Components Workbench the same as they did in RS Logix 500 and Studio 5000. And that says that there is actually a scan before the first scan of the PLC. And of many things it does is it takes these direct coils or output energizers anywhere it sees these, regardless of the conditions in front of it, it writes a zero to them. So it writes a zero to our green light variable. It writes a zero to our yellow light variable going to write a zero to our red light variable, but we don't have a direct call instruction for our blue light. We're using the set and reset. And in pre-scan, those instructions do not get zeros written to them. So whatever they were when the machine was shut off is what they're going to be when the machine turns back on. And that's why this light that used the set and reset instructions came back on after a power failure but these three did not. So this is important to be aware of. Again, this is not a situation where one is right and one is wrong. You just need to understand how they actually will operate on power up. Because I get a lot of calls from customers where they have a machine that runs 24 seven. And when that power goes out, we know it's gonna be a nightmare to get it started back up. And there can be many external reasons, but this is one that you see a lot of. So just be aware of it and kind of play with it and make sure you understand it. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.